Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family Channel on an early morning, 7.30 here on the beach in Phuket, beautiful Thailand. Today I have an amazing video, four amazing Bitcoin charts, a trading tip, a travel tip, some news as a convicted criminal, Christine Lagarde from the European Central Bank doesn't like Bitcoin, and of course a life tip at the end guys. Let's quickly jump into the charts to show you what is happening to Bitcoin today, as you might think that we would fall below 51k, but I can show you something that is really important at the moment. Let's see what the charts have to say. Bam. This is the first chart for today, guys, a four hour chart on Bitcoin. Uh, as I told you yesterday, you can still see that that Bollinger Band is really contracting, it's really tight, it's the two blue lines that you can see. Um, every time when we see this in the past, let's go a little bit back over here, for example, this period over there, you can see that the blue lines are really close to each other. That's the moment we break out to the top this time, but sometimes also to the bottom. Here again, when they contract, we break out. Let me see over here, look here. They were contracting really close and then we broke down. So there's two possibilities when we see this happening onto the charts. At the moment, it's a very long time already. It's already from the 17th of February all the way till the 24th. So there's already a week that we are moving in a very tight Bollinger Band. Believe me, the move is going to be explosive. It can be to the top, it can be to the bottom, but at 51k level at the moment is a huge level of support. So let's see if we can hold that level of support and then in the weekend, push it up again to that 55k level uh, because the volatility in the weekend is mostly uh, more than just during the week because then the institutional investors stop trading and then the retail investors take over. It can also lead to picking up a lot of liquidity of girls at that level over here, the 47,600 to 48,000 level. That's where also a lot of buy orders still are placed for Bitcoin guys. Now let's zoom out. On this chart, you can see that the 51K level indeed is a very important level. You can also see that the 42K level is a very important level. These levels, there is a shitload of accumulation and transactions being done in Bitcoin. So these levels are automatically very important support levels. That's why I'm saying if we don't break below 51K, we will bounce again to 55K, maybe even 57K levels. If we break below 51K, 48K, and maybe after that even 42K levels are levels that we need to look at. This is the first zoomed out chart that I want to share with you guys. This is a two month chart. So every candle is two months. On this two month chart, we can see on the bottom that the MACD is starting to cross bullish. The blue line is crossing that red line. And that's also what we can see in the bottom. We can see those dark red and those light red bars are turning into green now. This is the first green bar being created on a two monthly chart. Look to the past, what happened every time when we start to create those green bars. The first time in 2017, for example, over there was a green bar that was the start of that massive bull market. In 2020, that green bar led into the massive bull market in 2021. In 2024, this green bar is going to lead into that massive bull market in 2024 25 very beautiful chart. By now you all read all those tweets that Christine Lagarde, a convicted criminal, the head of the European Central Bank, doesn't like Bitcoin. Uh, she doesn't like Bitcoin because Bitcoin is outperforming her precious euro. That is what you can see on this chart. This is the Bitcoin price expressed in euros. You can see that it was many Bitcoins needed to buy one euro in the beginning in 2012. At the moment, we almost don't need any euros anymore to buy a little bit of Bitcoin. And that is why she doesn't like Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is massively outperforming her precious euro. The euro that should have been saving Europe, that is instead destroying Europe. They all know that the euro was not a success. They even know that Europe was not a success, but they still want to believe in their precious euro because they created it. It is not working, Miss Lagarde, look here, Bitcoin is working. Bitcoin is deflationary, as you will see on the next couple of charts, why Bitcoin is way more important than the euro or gold. Now, if we zoom out a little bit more, guys, we can see where we are at the moment in this white line. Those other two lines, the blue and the red line, are the cycle lines of 2015 and 2018. These two lines, you can see exactly what happened from the cycle bottom, totally on the left, to the halving, and from the halving towards the top. So we can see that the blue line that beautiful rise up to the halving and then from the halving went up a little bit more even 
all the way up to the top of that market. You can also see that red line and that red line did see a crash before the halving. But that is, as you all know, the COVID crash. The halving was in 2020, that COVID crash was in 2019. So yes, that red line is not a normal line. That line was affected by a massive worldwide uh, pandemic crash. So we saw the red line dropping before the halving, but again, during the halving, climbing up. Now this white line, if it's just gonna move normally without having any strange black swan events happening, this white line is continuing to climb towards that halving. And we'll follow that blue line a little bit. And from that halving, we can have a small retrace maybe, like 10%, maybe 20% yeah, from 60K, for example, to 50K or something like that. But from that moment, that will be the last moment for you that you will be able to buy Bitcoin cheap. So now, Till a few weeks after the halving is the only moment that you will be able to buy Bitcoin at these levels. From that moment, that white line is going to follow that red and the blue line steeply upwards. It could go only to 126,000 US dollar, a little bit lower than the red line, but it also could go to 250,000 US dollar, a little bit lower than the red line because of all the bullishness and the liquidity coming into the market because of all the spot ETFs, etc. The market is drying up. There is no more Bitcoin to sell. The demand is growing tremendously. So don't believe all those people that a crash before the halving is always happening. It has not always been happening. It happened one time before and that was during that COVID crash. All the other halvings, we didn't see a crash or a dip before. We saw a dip a little bit after the halving. In the monthly chart, we can see uh, on the bottom, on the RSI over there, that we hit the resistance level of 60 during 2019 during 2020 and during 2023 and we are hitting that resistance now again. Now, all those times that we hit that resistance in 2019, 2020 and 2023, all those moments were the moments that we saw an altcoin run. So if we will be resisted again at this line at the moment, you can expect the altcoins to start to outpace Bitcoin for a certain amount of time. The moment we break that orange line with that green line, that will mean that the Bitcoin dominance is going up again. That will mean that then the alts will pull back and the Bitcoin price will start to increase again. So this is a Bitcoin dominance chart that is showing you whatever happened every time when we saw a resistance on that RSI in the bottom. Chart I found on Crypto Crew University, one of the channels that I also always recommend to follow. Steve is a very good channel. Now, this is the last chart and a chart to educate Miss Lagarde and all the other naysayers in this beautiful world against Bitcoin, because this is the difference between Bitcoin supply and the gold supply. Now, the blue line is the supply that is being created. And the orange line, this is the new supply streaming into the market like daily. You can see in this blue line of Bitcoin that slowly all the Bitcoins will be mined and it will take till the year 2140 for the last Bitcoin to be mined. So that will take a very long time. Now, we can see that around 2065, at that moment, 20,999,000 Bitcoins will be on the market. Now, the orange line is showing you how many Bitcoins are being distributed to the market on a daily basis during the year. In 2065, it will be only 160 Bitcoin collectively mined every day during the year. In 2069, it will only be 80 Bitcoins and that will be dropping to 40 Bitcoins and to 20 Bitcoins to 10 Bitcoins. So less and less and less Bitcoins will come to the market every four year cycle. The blue line is telling us, hey, we'll take to 2140 till the last Bitcoin will be mined. Now compare this to gold. The gold production is this blue line, is just going up, it's just going up. There is no stop, it will continue going up because there is an unlimited supply of gold. Don't let them fool you to say, yeah, but gold is really exclusive, it's very limited. It's not limited. There is an unlimited supply on Earth and maybe more even on other planets. The gold production will go up. And if you look to the gold cumulative production near the yellow line, it's also only increasing. So that is not deflationary. That means it will be more and more produced, it will be more and more available. So the market cap of gold is only growing because there is new gold being found and mined all the time. There is no scarcity in that. This is just like just printing new money all the time till the printer runs out or till the computer stops working. Bitcoin has a limited supply of 21 million Bitcoins 
will take to the year 2140 and every four year cycle we will see less Bitcoin coming to the market daily. That is what we call an asset that is built for the people that will not create inflation and divide the wealth more equally all over the world because everyone has access to it. Everyone can start mining Bitcoins today. All the way till the year 2140, you will be able to still mine Bitcoin. You can do it, I can do it, everyone can do it. It's an open policy. This is not the same with gold, guys. It's not the same. Please understand this difference as it's a huge difference as why you should be investing into Bitcoin, the digital gold of the 21st century, instead of the physical old-fashioned gold. And Ms. Lagarde, if you can't understand these four lines, then you should not be on that seat as the leader of the European Central Bank. But I will come back to that later, Ms. Lagarde. As you can see, guys, the sun just coming up over there. It's really early, beautiful. Uh, I will come back to that in my travel tip. Did you enjoy the charts? Did you see and understand that the 51K level is a very important level because there's a lot of volume created there? Also at 42K level, you could see it's a very important level. So these huge levels of support are there on the chart. So if we would dip below that 51K level, guys, yes, we could visit that 48K level. And if we dip below the 48K level, yes, we could visit that massive support level there at 42K. That is how the charts move. But at the moment, 51K is a huge area of support. And I'm talking now to all those people that want to have a short-term entry in Bitcoin, because all of you are waiting, ah, maybe Bitcoin will crash 20% from 50k, 20% to 40k. Yes, that could be possible. Put your buy orders then. But for all those that are smarter, start to dollar cost average. Buy a little bit Bitcoin today at 51k. If we drop, you buy a little bit more, massive waves. If we don't drop, you need to buy a little bit more when we go up again at 53k or 54k. Just dollar cost average around the 50k level. You won't give a fuck about those two or three or five or even 10K less when Bitcoin arrives at that beautiful price of 100K. You will give a fuck if you didn't buy at these levels and you were like, ah, I will wait and sell it out and then bam, Bitcoin jumps to 60K or maybe even 70K and you are like, ah, now it's too late to buy. So dollar cost average at these levels so you won't regret not buying Bitcoins at these levels. That's my only tip for today. The trading tip for today, guys, two trading tips. The first trading tip, on the 26th of February, Ether Game is gonna launch its IDO on Ignition from Paid. Now, it is very important for you to realize that if you hold 75,000 pay tokens at the moment, you need to stake them, and when you stake those, you get 24 hours earlier access to that IDO. So for me, yes, of course I've staked 75K pay tokens. And if that Ether IDO will go live on the 26th, I will get 24 hours earlier access to buy that token at 0.04 cents, be aware, in USDC on the Polygon network. So if you want to participate, make sure you have a little bit on the Polygon network, USDC, and you buy that Ether token. Ether Games is going to be a massive project in this bull market. The IDO is going to take place on multiple launch pads, but for me, Paid Networks Ignition is the best launch pad out there because it has the best tokenomics by far. And even the open launch is available to everyone out there that doesn't stake paid tokens at all. So yes, there will be 24 hour early access for all those people that stake paid and the rest can also participate 24 hours later, but still will be able to buy a shitload of Ether tokens during the IEO on Ignition Paid Network, guys. So that's the first trading tip. Be aware, all these launch platforms starting to launch these IDOs now again, because that's always happening towards the halving, towards the bull market, because that's the most beautiful part to step in, because sometimes you need to lock them up for three months or five months, all depending on the project, but then during this bull market, those prices will go up, and yes, you will be able to take profits. So check it out, Ether Games launching on Paid Networks Ignition version two. Now guys, the second tip is about a remark I saw down below one of the videos. There was one person commenting down below the video, what a dumbass, this day guy think that Bitcoin still needs to go into a bull market top. Eh, this is already the top, look at the stock market. To all those kind of people that still think or believe those kinds of comments, please wake up. 
Bitcoin four-year cycle is just too simple to read. Every four years, the same thing happens over and over again. When we surpass the halving that's going to happen now in April 2024, we will see a massive run in the Bitcoin price because of the supply shock that it's creating. From that moment, only 50% of the Bitcoins are going to be mined every 10-minute block than before the halving. That's 50% less supply to the market on a daily basis well, the demand is growing tremendously because of the spot ETS, because of the retail investors, because of everyone wanted to be able to buy Bitcoin. Demand growing, supply dropping, supply shock will lead into increase of the price. Simple economics. So please don't believe all these comments of all those people commenting that just don't have any understanding of economics, the market or Bitcoin, guys. These people don't know what they are talking about. I'm in this industry since 2013. I had the first bull market. I had the second bull run in 2017. I had the third bull run in 2020. And I will have the fourth bull run at now 2024, 25, guys. It has been playing out always the same. Of course, when there will be World War III, and yes, all the electricity go down all over the world, and yes, the banks stop working, and all that stuff, yes. We could see, of course, also Bitcoin not performing as usual. But if we do the normal thing, we will go up after the halving. Don't believe all those comments, news articles that are now creating fear in your head that maybe the German government doesn't like Bitcoin, etc., etc., etc. I will come back to that in the news, guys. The news for today, guys, is about the European Central Bank, ECB. The European Central Bank yesterday announced we don't like Bitcoin. It's a speculative bubble. So they think that Bitcoin is a speculative bubble. Christine Lagarde, a convicted criminal, as you can see here in these two images. Yes, she's a convicted criminal that is leading European Central Bank. Be aware of this, that your European Central Bank is being led by a convicted criminal. I will say it again, a convicted criminal, a convicted criminal, a convicted criminal. Christine Lagarde is a convicted criminal. And she's leading the bank and she's saying now, oh, we don't like Bitcoin. It's a speculative asset, as if the stock market and gold and all the others are not a speculative asset, and they do seem to like those. And aside of that, Christine Lagarde, wake the fuck up. Do you see that the biggest asset managers of the world, BlackRock and many others, are now understanding the concept of digital gold of the 21st century Bitcoin? That is why they are integrating it to the biggest markets of the world, because they understand Bitcoin. You, Christine Lagarde, you convicted criminal, you still seem not to understand Bitcoin. Maybe you need some lessons. Maybe you need to be educated. Maybe you need to do your own research to understand why Bitcoin could also be the solution for Europe. If you won't do that, then Europe will run behind all the rest of the world, Christine Lagarde. So if you want to create your European Central Bank's digital currency to take a little bit more control on humanity in Europe, be my guest. But there will always be people fighting for freedom, Christine Lagarde. And that's also people that are not convicted criminals like you. And those people created, luckily, a beautiful monetary policy built on a blockchain called Bitcoin that is accessible for everyone out there and can't be stopped by people like you, criminals. So the news for the day, everyone is saying it's massive news. For me, it's not massive news when a convicted criminal says something about Bitcoin. No, it's way more important when Bitcoin is a legal tender in more and more countries, like El Salvador, like it will be in Argentina, like it is in Switzerland, like it is in more countries all over the world, it will be a legal tender. And still, those people, those convicted criminals, like Christine Lagarde, are saying, I don't like Bitcoin. Go back to jail. Go sit there on a chair and calculate all the mistakes you have made during your whole period that you were the European Central Bank's digital currency director, whatever you refer to yourself as. Really wake up and start to understand Bitcoin. No, I'm not going to spend any more minutes to this convicted criminal because I don't want those convicted criminals to get any attention on my videos. 
Sorry, Miss Lagarde, but you fell really deep. You should have started to understand Bitcoin by now. If not, you are not the right person to lead the European Central Bank because that will become a huge disaster and that will lead to a huge crisis for Europe because you resist to understand the new 21st century gold Bitcoin and how it can be a beautiful solution for all those people in Europe to preserve and protect their assets against the inflation that you guys are creating. You should be helping the people of Europe, not making them even more poor. But that was the news for the day. Happy news, don't you think? Christine Lagarde, convicted criminal, doesn't like Bitcoin. Yes, power to Bitcoin. And now with the sun on my face, guys, of course, the travel tip. The travel tip today is, yes, I love sunsets. I love the moment that the sun goes down. I had a beautiful sunset yesterday. Check this video over here. It's 22 seconds. It's a time lapse of one hour and 22 seconds. How beautiful the sunset is here on Phuket. I love it. But when you're traveling, never skip the sunrise. The sunrise is even a more magical moment. I mostly wake up around 5.30, 6 o'clock to witness that sunrise also here in Phuket. I can witness that sunrise from my garden. I see the sun coming up. It's really beautiful. It's a magical moment. The colors of the sky. It's just you feel awake and you have so much stuff to do early in the morning. When you wake up early in the morning and you go do a walk or do create a video or do work that you need to do behind the laptop, you are very effective early in the morning. I don't know what it is. You don't even need coffee. You just drink a glass of water and blah, 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 blah. You, can make all the, you can do all the jobs that you need to do for the day like in one hour time. Early mornings are really effective. For me, I love early mornings. Even if I go party, I always wake up early in the morning. I won't see the sunrise, of course. I'm getting older, so I need a few more hours to get to wake after a party. But normally during the week, it's beautiful to see the sunrise. Yes, I'm a sunset lover. I love all the sunsets all over the world. But the sunrise is also something I really don't want to skip. In Spain, we will be living in a very beautiful location where we can see the sunrise every day across the ocean. I'm already looking forward to that. But that was the travel tip for the day. Don't only enjoy the sunsets, the sunrise is also a very beautiful moment and will give you a lot of energy for the whole day ahead of you. Beautiful tip. And you might wonder why is he making this video this early this morning? Because again, today I have Muay Thai. Uh, Juna wants to do some more Muay Thai lessons. So we're doing three times a week Muay Thai by now. Uh, and I really like it. You know, it, it makes me not only lose a lot of kilos, I feel way more like, I feel way more fresh, I feel way more strong, I feel very fit because of it. So, yes, I'm doing a lot of Muay Thai lessons over here. Um, today, the inspirational quote is the end of the video, of course. The inspirational quote for today is, sometimes when things are falling apart, they might be falling into their place. That is also how you can look at it. I know how it feels when your whole world is falling apart, when everything is going wrong, when everything seems to be breaking and falling apart, like I said. But maybe all of those things are now falling into their place. Maybe that all needs to happen for the positive stuff to start happening. Did you ever think about it like that? Of course there will be ups and downs, and those downs will always feel stronger than those ups. But those downs sometimes need to be there for you to crawl up again and to realize that the thing that you were doing is not the right thing and that you need to change your life into doing stuff that you really love. So that falling apart of certain parts of your life will lead to falling into a place of other parts in your life. That's very simple. But the most important part of this is that the moment that those things start to fall apart, you come into this downward spiral. Don't get sucked to the bottom of this spiral. Don't get stuck in this spiral. Do continue your life. Do start to focus on positive things. Do start to focus on new things in your life. Do start to focus on your passions. And slowly you will crawl out of that spiral into this beautiful jump, into this new future that you created for yourself. It's very simple. When things seem to fall apart, they are probably falling into place. Realize this when you are feeling you're being sucked downward into the cycle. Just imagine at that moment, hey, this is just temporarily, things are falling apart so they can fall into place for me for the future. 
and then start to think about the future, start to dream about the future, start to live that future, start to surround yourself with your people that can give you that future. All of these life lessons that I've been giving you the last couple of weeks combined, apply them to your life. Yes, maybe I am a little bit too young to give you all these life lessons. I know, I see these comments, I don't care. In my honest opinion, I have lived the life already at this age of 45 that many people didn't live yet. I have experienced huge dips, the biggest dips. I lost a lot of people that I really loved, but I'm still here. I'm still positive. I'm still walking the beach. I'm still educating other people out there and I will keep doing that. No matter what other people say, if they are 60 or 70 and they're telling me, yeah, stop your life lessons. I don't give a fuck. I will continue the life lessons because these videos are not only for you. These videos are also for all those other people that maybe are less experienced than me. So I will just continue them because I see in the comments that a lot of people are also loving them. And it would be nice that if those people that don't love them, why would you even bother to comment negative? If you know that I'm just gonna continue it, maybe just be positive so other people will be positive as well. Now, that was the life lesson for today, guys. It's very important that whenever you feel that things are falling apart, they might be falling into place. They might be creating a very beautiful, awesome, adventurous future for you. So don't get sucked into this downward spiral. Start to crawl up by all the things that I just told you to do. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Big waves, yes, it's beautiful to have your feet in the hot water over here. But if you did enjoy the video, please give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, and let me know down below what you think about the charts and everything else, guys. Thank you, I wish you an amazing day. Oh, wait, is it Friday already? I need to check my phone if it's Friday, if it's Friday, if it's Friday. Oh, it's Friday, guys. I wish you an amazing Friday. I wish you an amazing weekend. I hope to see you in one of the lives. Uh, yes, on Rumble, yes, on YouTube, yes, on X. Uh, Saturday English live, Sunday Dutch live, still doing these lives. This bull market, do, during the bull market, I will continue doing a shitload of videos, a shitload of lives, and also be uh, uh, topping up all the subjects there in our course for the VIPs. Uh, but after this bull market, believe me, in the bear market, I am gonna take a break because, yes, I really need a break. Uh, it's been a very long trip now to coach you guys all through the bear market. It's already in a two year ongoing bear market now and the two-year ongoing bear market, making videos daily, educating people daily, it will take a lot of toll. It's taking a lot of time. Again, of course, booty for you. That's why I kept rumbling on, just to give you booty at the end, guys. But I will keep continuing doing this to the top of the Bitcoin market, tell you when to exit the Bitcoin market. But believe me, after that, I think, yeah, I deserve a 12-month break in the bear market where I will do a lot of other stuff than just creating content for you out there, which I love doing, but sometimes I feel sometimes you also need to break a little bit. Thank you for watching and wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam.